So once again, I'm in Japan, in Kyushu area. This is where the Lexus factory is located. And uh, Lexus Miyata factory has a number of interesting things that they do here. Uh, but the most important thing you need to know is that they produce one of our most popular Lexus models. That include the RX, the NX, and the UX, and also the ES as well. So very important factory for Toyota. I'm here to do um, a factory tour, but also to experience many things to do with this location, which is very fascinating. But right off the bat, we're going to be able to go into the paint process, which is a real treat because most of the time, car companies will not let you see the paint process. It's a bit more complicated, and uh, it's one thing that you actually don't get to see very often. So I am again at the Lexus factory, and I'm going to be walking through the paint process. Hopefully, you'll learn something when I explain what's going on. So we're going to go through the entrance right here. Apparently this look and feel was inspired by what the Lexus dealer looked like when you walk in. So even though it's a factory, it's got a bit of a high profile look. Okay, so let me explain to you how the painting process works. This is really quite intriguing because not too many people understand automotive painting and how complex they are. Just to give you some numbers here, they have a capability to produce 200,000 cars through the paint process for this factory, but there's also another factory which is called the factory number one. That one has 230,000. So together, believe it or not, it's 430,000 cars per year. That's how much they can produce uh, in terms of the capability. And uh, they pr can produce up to 13 colors in this particular plant. And in this plant, they produce the RX and also the ES. But in the, the other plant, which is located right beside each other, they produce uh, the UX and the NX. So the basic flow is that first, when the bodies come out of the body shop, and body shop is where they weld together uh, basically the components of the vehicle in terms of aluminum panels and steel panels. They come together and form the basic structure of a car. And then that's called body in the white. That's the language we use. And then you'll enter the uh, paint process. The paint process is quite a long process. And each step is uh, designed to create a very important um, protection from the elements, but also give you that beautiful finish. So first they go through a washing process. So they actually take a bath. The body goes into a special asset base to clean all the oil residue and so forth. And then it goes through what they call the electro deposition coat, which is basically a way to, again, protect the, um, the, the body from you know, further rusting or corrosion. And that has a positive and a minus um, charge. So the ED will stick to the body as well. It comes through the oven to dry that up, and then it moves to right here. They inspect the ED to make sure that electrical deposition was done correctly, a very important process. They apply some underbody coating and also what they call the body sealer, which is essentially just filling up all the gaps so that they don't rust down the road. So those are important process. So once the, all the body sealers and the undercoating is done, then we go through what they call the primer coat, which is really pr to protect the paint from further corrosion, or any kind of corrosion for that matter, and go through the oven. And then for the first time, you begin to apply the actual paint. So that includes the base coat that goes first. It doesn't have any gloss, obviously. And then you apply the clear coat. So you have a clear coat, the base coat, and then the primer coat. So those three paint form the basic finish of a vehicle. So essentially, most cars have three layers of paint, in addition to the electro deposition, which is very important as well. So those three will then form together, go through the oven, and then they obviously do the inspection for the final finish, and that's the end of the uh, paint process. All right, so this part is really interesting because most people can't quite understand how this is possible, but it is possible, and that is they're able to switch color from car to car. So for example, we have kind of silverish color in the front there, that's ES, and then we have RX coming through that has much darker color. And they're able to switch uh, from one color to the next color with no downtime. So what they do is they drop their, uh, what we call the cartridge or the head that has uh, one unit, including the paint itself and also the actual shower head, I guess you call them. And then that's one unit, they drop that out and they pick up another one with a different color. And so there's no contamination in terms of the robot side switching color because they basically produce car based on demand. Uh, depending on whatever customer ordered, that's the order they produce in the factory. So you might wonder though, these cars are pretty close, how come the paint from the previous car or the car behind does not contaminate each other? Well, it's called a downdraft booth. 
And even though there are no actual partitions or curtains, it's designed so that um, the air movement from top to bottom uh, will carry all the paint particles straight through underneath. And as long as there's at least three meters of distance between the cars, the paint will actually not travel and con contaminate each other, which is an amazing technology if you think about it, because even a small amount of droplet, if it does travel through to the next car, can completely ruin the car. So the fact that they can uh, use a downdraft um, air, curtain, air curtain, if you want to call it, and move the paint all the way through, and then switch the cartridges, and every single car be able to switch from one color to the next, well, that technology is right here, even though it's hard to believe that's exactly how they build cars right here at Toyota and Lexus. So now you'll see the actual robot um, where the arms are moving back and forth, and again, applying additional paint. And what they say is obviously the robot follows whatever you program, and so what they've done is to program it using the actual human skills. So the uh, experienced um, operators in the paint process knows exactly how to paint the car, sort of the speed and the angle and the distance, and they will program that onto the robot. So it's basically mimicking or doing exactly what the human operator would be doing, and that way you're um, copying or following through exactly what a Takumi or experienced workers would do. Now if you look carefully, these robots are covered with some kind of a protection because you don't want uh, the paint itself to get into between the robotic arm because these are six-axis robots, uh, so they have covers on them. But the covers are actually divided into three sections. Uh, the closer you are to the car, the dirtier it's going to get. So what you see, the blue line over here, I don't know if you can see, it can come right close to here. And so the beginning of the arm here, below the blue line surface, uh, has to be changed over uh, basically every shift, because that one gets pretty dirty. And then the second tier, which is above the blue line, are not as often uh, in terms of the requirement for change, so that's being changed once a month. And then there's also a little bit of protection beyond that, which will not get dirty very often. So those are changed three times a year during the shutdown period. So you have three different stages of how you change the covers to minimize cost, but also to make sure that uh, the robotics perform flawlessly without getting contaminated from the paint themselves. And the interesting thing is that even though Toyota and Lexus standardize many aspects of production system, apparently when it comes to the cover for the robot, it's not always standardized, and at some factories they might replace the entire thing uh, or do it in different frequency. All right, so now the cars are actually entering the oven, and this is the drying oven, obviously, and they will move that through at this pace right here until the paint is dry so that they can finally apply the clear coat on top of all the paint. So here we have a cutout display of a car, and so I can again just reiterate what the car goes through in terms of paint process. Uh, so we have the base metal, clear metal, that will be cleaned through the acid bath, we talked about that earlier, and it goes through uh, electro deposition coat, which is a way to prevent any kind of corrosion. That's ED coat, we call it, and it uses uh, special charged particles to have the ED coat adhere to the base metal. And then we have the first primer coat. And this one comes in four different colors. It's not the color of the car yet, uh, but this becomes the base coat. And then we have the, what they call the color base, or the first application of the color uh, that will become the final color. So this is a red car, so this is a red paint, different from the primer coat. Uh, and then assuming you have a metallic paint, uh, or even if you don't have a metallic paint, there's one more layer of paint that's applied called the metallic or mica base, so that goes on top of the color base. And then finally, you have a clear coat that's applied so that the paint itself become glossy and shiny. And so you have basically three layers of paint in addition to the primer and in addition to ED coat. So you have one, two, three, four, five layers, final. So that's how much of a paint that goes into the car to make sure that you get the best ultimate paint finish. So we have the final finish, and what they wanted to do here is to show different strength and different angle of the light on the roof right here to simulate kind of morning sun and then mid-afternoon sun, early evening, and so forth. And you can tell this particular paint 
which they, I believe is called red mica, has that deep enhancement of color that shift based on the lighting effect, and so that you get, you know, basically multiple colors from a single color, and so you don't get um, too bored with your car if you have this kind of paint because it reflects slightly differently based on the lighting condition. And they're saying that sometimes we refer to this as a color that you don't get bored with. And just to finish off, you know, they just want to point out how deep the paint is. So if I were to bring something close to it, like, a, like my watch, you can actually read the time off the other side because it's such a deep, crystal clear paint. And again, in Lexus, this is what you get, the best of best. So beautiful paint, let's keep on going. It's kind of interesting to also point out that when you open the door here, uh, for Lexus at least, the clear coat is also applied in the inner part of the door so you get the same quality paint inside as the outside. Uh, obviously you don't get the clear coat right here which is the inner portion because the actual door panel itself gets installed but in case you didn't know, even here it has a Lexus emblem or logo on it so pretty cool. Also, when you open the door, one thing you notice is that there's a sealer that's applied. Of course, there's paint on top of it, and that's to prevent any kind of water entering the inner part of the door. Um, but apparently, that's also done by Takumi member, by hand, because it's something that cannot be done by a robot yet, and it's almost perfect, and that itself is a work of art. So if you notice, the cars are now coming out of the booth. They stay in the booth for seven minutes at 80 degrees Celsius, so that's what it takes to kind of dry up the paint and it's ready for the clear coat now so you can see the car coming out and just like before the inner portion or inner parts of the cars are done by human hand because it's difficult to do by ro robotics although i've seen in other factories where uh, robotics can do all of the work inside or outside but this here interior wise is done by hand and it moves on and the rest of the exterior is done by robots so you can tell the car is just slowing down to be positioned for a final clear coat and uh, the robot will apply the final finish. So as you can tell right now, it's kind of like a semi-matte finish, which itself is actually pretty cool, but you need a final coat to make sure that um, it becomes nice and glossy as you would expect from a Toyota model. So let's see what happens. So what's interesting is that they are actually replacing some of the robots so they were much bigger previously, but you can tell the new ones they installed are physically smaller. As you can tell, the arms are smaller, the entire body is smaller, but this is where they apply the final coat, and then uh, the basic the paint process is complete. And the clear coat is very important for long-term durability, so they do apply a fair amount of it, more so than the other paint process, and so they take their time to make sure that they apply the correct amount of the clear coat. So as we begin to conclude the paint process right here, uh, apparently it takes 10 hours of work from beginning to end to finish the painting work on a Lexus model. So that's a very long time, 46 stations from the beginning to final station. There is an inspection that goes beyond this. Uh, well, ob obviously there's a drying booth and then the final inspection. So we don't get to see that, but it's really cool to see how much effort and time are applied to ensuring that Lexus quality and Lexus paint is the best in the world. And you can see how each step basically adds on top of the previous step to come up with a, a really amazing, fascinating color that are very deep. And I should know from my own experience, having owned quite a few different Lexus models over the years, uh, currently we have the 2023 Lexus GX, which is a kind of pearl metallic white, um, but I also have the Lexus LC500, that's different paint. They're not produced here, a uh, different factory obviously, but we also did purchase the Norgreen Lexus GX, which I sold already, but that also had a very deep paint process. And then for a short time, I even had um, Lexus IS500, which was uh, called a Blue Mica 2.0, something like that. I can see how beautiful the paint is, and that's because of all the process and the quality that's built in. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the paint process. Let me know if you have some comments or questions. I have more to show you guys. Thank you so much.